Thank you for joining us today for this webinar for Better Together, the power of modern device management and mobile threat defense combined. This is what we're going to run through today. Uh, going to do an introduction of Ash and Jace, which Ash being myself. What is MDM and MTD to understand that? What the threat landscape for mobile looks like? What are the three common use cases for mobile threat defense? What is Avanti's MDM capabilities? Why are we better together? in detail and we're going to demonstrate some threats uh, from Jason and how we're going to detect and remediate that and as well as a, a Q&A session and a, uh, an offer that we have available which is the 30-day threat assessment. So I hope you enjoy today's session. Uh, I'm Ashley Armit, Ash otherwise known. I'm a senior sales engineer at Avani, been here for quite a few years now, ex-mobile lion, been in the industry for around about 25 years doing uh, everything mobility and security related uh, in ANZ and APAC. And over to you, Jace. Hey, thanks, Ash. Thanks for having me. So very similar background, right? Senior sales engineer at Zimperium. Um, and as you know, right, my background is from Avanti. So um, very, very close heritage, a very close ecosystem, right? Um, yep. But yeah, keen to, uh, keen to jump in mobile, into mobile threat defense today. Excellent. So let's start with what is MDM and MTD. So modern device management, MDM, uh, we're taking the end user through a life cycle, uh, the device through the life cycle with the end user and going all the way from when you first get a de device all the way to end of life and everything that's covered in between. So we're going to be discovering these devices, we're going to be provisioning these devices with zero touch enrollment, uh, agentless or agent based. We're going to be using Apple Business Manager and we're going to be getting these devices out of the box uh, onto the system to then get all these configurations and security profiles onto the device as well as the applications as well. And we're going to make sure that's completely secure and in a highly available uh, user experience so that end users uh, have less impact and more pro productive straight away out of the box. On top of that, we're gonna be monitoring and providing notifications and taking care of support-based related services to these end users consistently and easily without end user interaction. And yeah, on end of life, we're gonna be removing enterprise data, removing the apps, and allowing the end user to either take the device away in a BYO scenario or factory reset it to be repurposed somewhere else. Excellent. And I guess where does Imperium sit or where does mobile threat defense, Avanti mobile threat defense sit? I think it was really that, that middle one, right, Ash? It's the secure piece. So once the device has been deployed, Right. Once you've got that monitoring from a compliance standpoint in place around, you know, your baseline, the apps deployed, the configs deployed. How do we actually have an understanding of the security baseline? Has it deviated from that baseline? And also, what about the other things that are outside of your control? You know, frankly, we don't trust our users. Right. Where where are they going on Friday night? Are they joining rogue access points? Are they clicking on phishing links? Uh, are they sideloading apps? Right. So. We provide that assurance monitoring. We'll talk about it more, but that's really around the iOS, Android, and Chrome OS devices. That that absolute security assurance. Excellent. So, you know, a bit on that. You know, why are we actually here talking about threat defense today? What is happening out in the wild? And as far as what we're hearing from our customers, there's a few key trends. You know, the first is, and and I'm sure this isn't new to anyone. We're seeing an explosion of apps either through you know, official stores, third-party stores, and also just apps being developed by you know, organizations to house corporate data, right? More things are being moved to mobile, more workflows, more tasks are being mobilized. So we're really seeing an explosion of mobile application usage. And we're also seeing a really large volume of data being moved to mobile. And this right here, I think this kind of summarizes all of those things that we're seeing. There's a growing vulnerability gap for mobile as a whole. We're seeing the mobile threats, the explosion of apps, 
but also things like BYO device usage is, is on the rise. Um, there's a lot of continuous innovations and requirements for people to move to mobile. The only thing is IT operations, security, uh, incident response teams aren't being given more resources to deal with this vulnerability gap. So this is really resulting in, you know, if I cherry pick on the right, you know, a huge explosion of mobile fraud, of reputa reputational damage from mobile, right? And this is some of those stats. So if we think about some of the attacks and risks, and this is just Imperium's uh, data, this isn't necessarily crowdsourced data, we're seeing an explosion of zero day vulnerabilities on mobile. And I think the number is you can see a 466% increase in zero day vulnerabilities on mobile last year. And another really interesting one we always point out, uh, we'll talk about this more later, but 40% of even devices that were compromised were not jailbroken, jailbroken or rooted. So we're seeing a, a rise in sophistication of attacks, making it difficult to, more difficult to detect. And some of the other pointed things, you know, malware has always been a problem and it's a growing problem. So for iOS and Android, you know, last year we found over 2 million unique new samples of malware. And if you're interested in some of these stats, we have these in our, our global threat report as well. And the last one, I, I, I don't like throwing too many stats, but th I think this is a good one to call out. Phishing is a big problem on mobile. We're not just talking about mailbox and email. We're talking about SMS, could be Facebook Messenger, could be Signal, Telegram, um, could be a push notification, right, from a, a rogue app you've installed. But the overall stat is 75% of all phishing is now being tailored to mobile devices, um, such as you know, SMS filtering, right? And this is because attackers know they can be more successful. It's harder to spot a phishing attack on a mobile device, and it's, it's easier for them to just get someone to click on a link. Um, with with our phones, we, we usually click on everything. It's 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 a whole lot easier. And I think this is another good example of one of the sophisticated attacks we saw last year, right? So this was a fraud example where um, the Xenomorph malware was installed on the device. And what was quite clever about this is it actually stole MFA tokens. So this is where uh, to commit fraud, they they installed a piece of malware that looked like a normal gaming app or or something quite benign, but in the background, it could steal session cookies, it could steal MFA tokens, and it can even generate its own MFA tokens and then send them off to a remote server to log in and commit the fraud. So a lot of automation and sophistication. And this is another way good to look, uh, another good way to look at it, right? You know, when we think about what is the art of, of the possible, where are these attacks happening? How can they happen? Uh, it's really at every single layer of 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 the device, right? Um, you know, if you pick out some examples, you know, malicious Bluetooth-based attacks, SMS-based attacks, app-based attacks, um, even some interesting ones we see around the world with rogue cell towers, right? So, the the key thing to keep in mind is there's a very broad range of risks and threats that we need to be considering when we're developing our mobility and security strategy. That's DNA, device, network, and application right there. Exactly, exactly. And I think to round it out, right, this is just to show what's happening in our backyard. So this is our data. This isn't crowdsourced information, and it's only on real devices where we've detected real attacks. So what we've seen, you know, this was just a couple you know, place and time snapshots, and we can only render 5,000 events per map. So this is only a very small sample size, but you know, here in Australia, we're not really sure what was going on in Queensland, but we saw a huge device compromise uh, campaign happening up in, in mid Queensland. And another interesting one, you know, if we look at just Q1 this year, we saw a lot of stuff going on in Adelaide, right? Again, we're not alluding to anything particular happening. We're just pointing out the fact that this stuff is happening here in our backyard on our devices. That's the key thing. So let's look at the common use cases for MTD. Yeah, excellent. So we'll do a quick demo on these later, but essentially when we talk about mobile threat defense, mobile threat detection, uh, whatever acronym you want to use, the, the cornerstone of security on mobile is application vetting, right? So the stores do a great job. The Apple store and the Google store do a fantastic job at vetting and curating those stores. 
but there's still a lot of risks that you as an organization might consider. So for example, we're not just talking about malware, we're talking about things like security risk of the app. How well was that app developed? How is it processing your data? How is it storing your data? And then things from a, a security, uh, a privacy perspective, where is it sending that information, right? It, it may be legitimate from a coding perspective, but do you really trust that your data is being sent to uh, this certain country in a certain location using a certain method? Um, do you really trust, say, a certain hosting provider where your data is being sent? So what we allow you to do is pull in all your third party or in-house made apps. We automatically reverse engineer and pen test them. And we give you ratings as well as the lightweight pen test reports. And this allows you to answer very important questions such as, should we be using this app in our environment? Should corporate data be allowed to be stored in this app? Um, and it's, again, it's continuous because you can vet an app last week and the new version that's released for that app next week they're two completely different apps, right? And it's ultimately out of your control. So how do you automate that vetting process and inform things like your whitelisting or allow listing and deny listing in your MVM? We provide that intelligence. Another really key feature is OS vulnerability management and specifically risk-based vulnerability management for mobile. This is a really tricky thing to do, right? So we pull in all your operating system data we map it, of course, to CVE and CVSS scoring, but we also provide you live threat intel to say, great, this is a high risk, or this OS is high risk, but this is an operating system that's high risk and there's active exploits available. So really allowing you to focus on what's most important. So when it comes to, say, a device refresh, what are the, you know, what's the population of your users that absolutely have to have their devices refreshed, or who should be blocked from having access to corporate data? It allows you to make those decisions. Excellent. And the last one, you know, a very, you know, thing, uh, a very unique thing that shouldn't be understated is our forensic and threat hunting capabilities. This is where if you have a tool at the moment, it might be quite binary, black and white. Device is compromised or not. What we provide is kill chain analysis. We give you information around what happened, how it happened and some of those additional forensics. So if you click on a phishing link, what's the link? What's the category? Or even answering questions like, how do we prevent an attack from happening in the future? Excellent. And I think this is another way to, to round out, you know, our technical capabilities. Of course, you know, you mentioned before, right, Ash, device, network, app, and phishing. Those are the core foundational components of our detection, but we go a bit beyond that. This is where we do things like, and these are industry first, how do we vet PDFs and attachments? How do we vet the shortcuts that have been installed? What about your extensions? And then we also do things like vetting your profiles and certificates, your cellular networks, and we even have a forensic log analysis capability, which allows us to peek a bit further into the operating system and things that might have already happened previously. Yep. And if we go to the flip side of what Ivani MDM can do uh, to complement everything that Zimperium can do. Um, we, we have a broad subset of products that we do um, from endpoint and risk management to service and asset management. And we have a, a lot of uh, product in this space to address these use cases that, that, are, that you solve, need solving in the enterprise. So, we're going to be focusing on threat defense, uh, primarily with our Zimperium partner. And so we're going to be managing uh, all the devices. We're getting those devices into the end user's hand. We're integrating with a ton of things uh, that you need to enable the end user to be productive. So we're, we're uh, able to support original device manufacturers like Apple, Android, Samsung, etc. We have full network access control integrations. And we have our mobile threat defense integration as well. The partners there integrate with our seams and saws, like Splunk, all the IDPs there, we support natively out of the box. And we have a ton of SaaS integrations, fully support 365 and Google Workspace with um, Azure and Beyond Corp as well. And we have our enterprise apps, we've got a pretty cool one with fluid mobility for exact uh, 
location-based specific third-party enablement as an example and we support a ton of VPNs as well. Um, every VPN that's out there we've got our own VPN, we've got Avani Connect Secure, Pulse Secure uh, as well as our tunnel app as well. So we support everything from a management perspective to enable you to group it all together to give the user exactly what the end user needs to get that data onto the device to enable them to be productive. So why is Avani and Imperium better together? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll cover this one, right? So it's, it's good to think, you know, foundationally, you know, these are two different platforms built to solve two different problems at the end of the day, right? So your, your, your management capability is all about how do we provide the absolute best onboarding experience? How do we deploy, you know, at scale, 10, 20, 30,000 users? And how do we give them a great rich set of apps automatically installed and configured uh, in the case of Android, we configure the container. Um, we, we really deploy everything they need to become productive. And then from there, we really monitor, have they got their apps installed? Have they, are they missing a policy, a configuration? And if they are, how do we remediate that? So that's all the, the management side. And then where we complement that is we extend and say, great, you've deployed, you're ready, you've, you've, you've locked the door, so to speak, on that device, you've set the baseline, what happens if they deviate from that? What happens if the user tries to disable security? What if they do something that's out of your control, like click on a phishing link, join a rogue network, or you know, even do things like execute accidentally an exploit of some kind, right? So what we really do is the detect and also respond and prevent breaches on a multitude of different vectors. And I think this is a really good way to, to, to visualize it, right? I'm not gonna cover everything on this slide, but if we look at the vectors on mobile, device, network, app, phishing, and web content, and then the actual risk categories, things like threats and exploits, user behaviors, policy and config, data leakage, and social engineering, right? There's a lot of different risks you should be considering when you're developing a, a risk mitigation strategy. And this is what it looks like with MDM. Right, you do a great job at stopping certain user behaviors, at stopping certain social engineering, and a few other pointed things around, you know, enforcing configuration uh, or enforcing the use of only certain networks, et cetera. But still, there's a lot of residual risk that's out of your control um, or even just really hard to, to mitigate. So, this is where, you know, if we look at the combined solution of MDM plus MTD, we can cover that kind of full placemat of risk from the device, net app, phishing, web content, and everything from threats and exploits of social engineering. And of course, you know, we're, we're the first to say, we not, might not be able to stop everything. At least you get detection and notification and then extended response. Things like if something's happened on a device that's out of your control, at least you know about it. And you might be able to do something downstream like blocking with conditional access, blocking through network access control, or even then saying, hey, bring your device into the service desk, let's replace it, right? So it, it's all about that detection and response. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there, Jace. Just to recap, mobile is the entry point, and that's what that matrix uh, was pretty much describing. Um, so attacks are on the rise, we've got higher sophistication, uh, pretty much Australia is the malware capital of the world, uh, purely because uh, we're so advanced when it comes to using mobile phones and want to use the latest tech. Um, that's what Australia's been known for. So we're going to be susceptible to that. So 75% of all phishing is mobile based, as Jace mentioned before, available in that report. Um, so you have access to that. So to summarize the joint use cases always on protection so as soon as you're registered and enrolled in a viney neurons for mdm or epmm you are activated and on the system ready for mobile threat defense for device network and application and phishing and content protection out of the box the end user doesn't need to do anything that enables 100 percent fleet adoption rate so therefore you can be confident as a security team that you know that your iOS and Android fleet have MTD enabled and you're getting visibility to all those things that Jace has mentioned before. 
we have from a management side tiered compliance actions to be able to do actions from a threat detection and response, notify, block, quarantine, retire, send emails, push notifications, do things like that based upon uh, events that have occurred. And on top of that, GDPR privacy enforcement, so we can remove the end user from this as well. We've got our NDM use cases, MTD standalone use cases, but the joint use cases, it's really cementing that to better together means 100% adoption, and you're going to get that full visibility and protection that you require. On that note, we're going to, to go to a live demonstration. So I have a dividing neurons for MDM console here and a, an iOS device enrolled in this instance uh, through our Vanigo client and some sample apps there. Uh, I have a sample uh, 0365 access uh, web clip that we've deployed, which has been injected onto this device somehow. Uh, it looks very similar to what we have on there. You agree, Jace? Like it looks like yeah. something that you need to click on to get access to your to your information, right? So this is how simple and easy it is these days: is to you know put a web clip on, change it, inject that in. Whether how that got on there, there's many methods, uh, but yeah, we can literally click on that and. It'll open up and there we go. We have detected that this URL is risky because uh, we're enrolled and registered in the binding neuron platform. Um, we have MTD enabled and it said this is malicious. Now we still give them the option to continue anyway, um, but yeah, we can, we can do full blocks and things like that. But we do have that capability there. Um, in the app, it's literally going to look like this. So we can see threat defense is enabled. So device threats, network threats, and app threats to go to device threats. We can get a, a summary here. If there's something wrong, it will appear. We have some network threats. If it's connecting to insecure Wi-Fi networks, that will pop up. We'll get notifications, etc. Similar um, to what we get in normal notification screen. And yeah, if there's any app threats, they will appear here as well. So we have that, um, and we also have our phishing and content protection, which we can go down to our Safari app and look at our extensions. And we can see there's an MTD extension there, and it's part of the Avani Go app, and we're um, al allowed it in our privacy, um, private browsing, and for all websites, so we can protect against our phishing and contact protection there. But that's got the full SDK in it. We've got an SDK built in by Zimperium into our Ivani Go app. So it's just enabled by a key. If we go here to our configurations and we search for MTD, uh, we can see our activation key here, which we've deployed. And we get this from the Zimperium console. It's just an activation key there. We put it in and we distribute it to all to our devices that we want. In this case, we've just distributed it to, to one user. Uh, we also have local actions, so the device can actually be offline um, once it's activated. And we have this capability with device, network, and applications. And with each one, we have the ability to block or send to a network sinkhole for all network activity, just say for out of compliance app, suspicious apps, and in Android land, we can do it a bit differently with disabling Bluetooth and Wi-Fi or quarantine, or we can even wipe the device. But we've got a ton of device threats, uh, which we can go through here. An example would be something like USB debugging mode or um, from a uh, network threat level, uh, we can have man in the middle protection as well. So that's quite simple to set up and easy to use. Um, can go back to our configurations and we've also got our uh, anti-phishing as well protection which we can do for ios and android and and set contact blocker as well and use a vpn or um, url handlers for android but it's quite easy and simple to configure and there's nothing for the end user to do so on that note I hand it over to you, Jace. Yeah, excellent. And hey, look, just while I'm getting this up, I think it's really important to note 
you know, everything that we're doing there is, is on device. This is really unique to us. We ship our detection capability to Avanti Go, meaning we can turn off the internet, turn off cellular, turn off Wi-Fi. If someone's still trying to exploit or attack that device or even send a malicious URL over the air, let's just say on a rogue access point, we can still detect these threads and block them and respond without internet connectivity, right? This is a really unique thing. Um, and of course, the, you know, the other thing I'd point out on that phishing protection, the phishing protection is device wide. So we're not just looking at say email links or just Safari based links. We are looking at everything, right? Because we're filtering at a socket level, no matter where it comes from, we just care where that link is going. So if it's malicious through WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, uh, an app of some kind, we will intercept it, block it, and as you'll see, actually report it back to the console, right? So here's you know some threats, and I think we were talking about this Adele user, Adele V. She's been you know mucking around with a device. I think she's accidentally clicked on some phishing links, and let's actually have a look. So we can see that threat, the device, the user. We can see the network it happened on at the time, their IP information. Um, we can see location of the actual attack and where it happened. But then we can also see the forensics behind, here was the link and the category, right? And this is quite important because it could be a phishing, could be malware, suspected, just unknown, but it's all category-based our phishing and, and content-based protection. And of course, even forensics, so we can say, how was this reported? So in this case, it was through the SDK, but it could be through our VPN, could be through SMS. Um, so we actually give you forensics around how did that link get to the device, allowing you to answer questions around, hey, is there is there an SMS phishing campaign targeting our, our organization? Or are we just having a lot of apps with malicious links? And maybe what apps should we look into? And that's a good point, right? So the next thing is, how do we evaluate the apps in our environment. This is a very key feature of ours. So what we do is we pull in every application, iOS and Android, and Chrome extensions from your devices. We reverse engineer and we pen test using static and dynamic analysis. And this is really important because this is what allows us to answer those questions such as, hey, what are the riskiest from a security perspective? What are the riskiest from a privacy? And what are the riskiest from say a malware? And then from there, you know, I've got some good examples here. I've got this Thai Life uh, application. It looks to be high risk. We've counted it as malicious and a medium privacy. So I can actually come in and say, here's the, the report I downloaded from the console. And it might point out, we have technical reports, which is, you know, between 20 and 200 pages of detail. We have executive reports, which is a two pager. So let's just say an executive asked, hey, are we using this app? I want to I have a, a report on should we be using that app and a JSON for your investigators. So here's all the raw data to go and thread hunt through. But at the end of the day, this is the report on, you know, we start with permissions and it's contextual. Should this app have this permission? That doesn't really quite fit the bill. But we also map it to compliance. So things like CVE, MassVS, OWASP, GDPR, HIPAA, PCI, CVE. And then if I just jump down to some examples, this is why we counted it as malware. We found a specific uh, malware package and here's the malware family. And just some other things that we usually point out you know, besides vulnerability and privacy violations, here's where your app is communicating with. And this is the content categories of data being sent to these locations. And I know I mentioned a raw data report as well. This is just a, a bit of a look into what this looks like. So if you really know what you're doing in terms of investigating, we give you the data to go that step further and investigate the apps in your environment. And of course, it doesn't just stop there. Once you have this information, this is where you can say, all right, let's put this into our MDM allow list or deny list, or let's mark it in Zimperium as a out of compliance app. So every single time this app shows up on a device, you can choose to say, let's block them from corporate access. Let's you know, for example, uninstall it, let's do X. You have that automation to take action. Now, the last thing I'll show as well is OS risk. It's a very rich and fairly new feature set. 
where we can evaluate all the operating systems and map those operating systems to CVE and actual risk. And what we mean by that is great. You might have a CVE in your environment or a, a sorry, a critical operating system that should be patched. That's great. But is it actually exploitable? Right. So this is where we can say, show me the, uh, for example, device count. Oh, wrong one. But show me if you know. Here's all the operating systems with at least one device, and it's and it's exploitable and it's non-upgradable. So when it comes to things like you know device refresh time, what are the devices that you should absolutely refresh first? And I can see these to, you know, this device right here. If I click into it, it's a Pixel Three. It's risky. It's exploitable. And in fact, I can even click into it and see this device has been exploited. This is a great example of a device I should be replacing in the next device refresh. Okay. I'll hand it back to That's you. That's great. Yeah. So um, we have, as I mentioned at the start, a free 30 day threat assessment available to Avanti Neurons for MDM customers and EPMM customers straight out of the box that can quite easily be done. Um, Jace, did you want to? delve into that a bit more. Yeah, look, the, the crux of it is we will you know, work with you guys to pull information from your environment, your devices, your apps, your operating systems. We'll vet all of that information and then we'll let it run in your environment for 30 days. And this is where we can start to get some threat modeling of what's actually happening. What apps, what risky apps, what risky devices do you have? And at the, at the end of the 30 days, we'll provide you back a report on what we saw and some recommendations of how you might address those mobile risks. Um, so that's it. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, to get that full visibility of your, your iOS and Android fleet from everything you've mentioned today and get a, a report out of that and actually see what's going on, because uh, you'll be quite surprised. I know when I first saw it um, as a product all those years ago, I was quite impressed. I didn't think uh, all these things were happening and um, I'm running it on my device at the moment and it's just constantly picking up things when I'm overseas, interstate, airports, etc. and different apps just have these, you know, weird permissions that pop up. It's, yeah, uh, it's good to know what's going on. So that's right. And from an end user perspective, it, it, there's next to no impact at all. But anyway, thanks, Jace, and thanks everyone on the call uh, today. Uh, really appreciate your time and yeah, please reach out to myself or Jace if you uh, want to take up this free 30 day threat assessment offer or for any further information. Thank you. Um, we'll jump over to yeah. Q&A now. We finished early. We've got some more time than uh, expected. Yeah.